Welcome back, folks. It's episode number 100, baby. Woohoo! We made it, Greggy. It's been a long ride. A lot more to go. The big 100. Woo. You remember when we? Do you remember when we said we're going to do ten episodes? Yeah, that was a long time ago. I don't know if I remember it exactly, but I, I remember it was a few that we were going to do. Just try it out. So a hundred oh, episodes later. <laughs> hundred episodes, are. man. And you know what? I'm so happy to release the Scrub Roundtable because that's where it, it's actually what this is. It's just, it's just one. We should have called this podcast the Get a Grip on Scrub Roundtable. <laughs> Because that's all we do. It's a couple scrubs. You know what's hilarious? I write some articles and, and people don't like my articles. And they, they always, sometimes, they, not always, they preface their comments like, you know a lot about lighting, but. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> but. Bigger lighting scrub. Yeah. I, was, I am a scrub. You know what, man? I, you know, it's interesting. And so I'm very thankful. We're super thankful for all the people. That, we're actually, you know, it blows me away. It really does. It blows me away yeah. how you know how well this podcast has done and all the support we've got and you know now we've been invited to live stream from the IES convention which will already be done by the time you guys hear this but um, man what a ride it's a hundred episodes we got the Light Ted online video show we got the business blast and we're going to be start live streaming from events it's been so much fun and it's so much thanks to all you listeners out there and this one goes back to the first sponsor of this show. Our number one sponsor, we're very thankful to Ira and Josh and everyone at Keystone Technologies. Go to K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com, baby, keystonetech.com. They believed in us from the beginning. And so we thank them in their episode number 100. And Greg, what, are, what product are we going to tell the peeps about today? Well, we believe in them and not just because of this podcast, but because they're the right company that is going to really bring LED lighting forward. They have been around since 1945. Mm. and they back what they say they're going to do. They give you great pricing, great service. Everything about them is awesome. The product that we want to talk about today is a center basket troffer fixture. Number one, um, I think you've mentioned it, that they named it right. Yeah. They call yeah, it the right, center man. basket troffer. That's yeah, the way to so, do it. Uh, and they have it in two by two, they have it in one by four, and they have it in two by four. They used to have just a retrofit kit. Now they have the whole fixture. So if you want to move fixtures, if you have new construction, um, if, if you need just a new housing on the fixture, you can get it all complete and it looks exactly like your retrofit kit. So you match it up. Looks beautiful. Great fixture. Go to keystonetech.com. That's K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H.com. And remember folks, we called it 2019 is the year of the lighting badasses. Oh no, was it the, the year of the warranty pig? Something like that. Something like that. But maybe it's both. But here's what I'm going to tell you folks. You got to join our club. If you're a person out there, you're listening to this show and you think everything, not everything, but tons of what Greg and I know comes from me. No, it comes from the National Association of Innovative Lighting Distributors, folks. We learned so much there from the other members. You should join us. Um, Greg and I are now involved in, uh, honored to be man helping manage that association. So come on down, check us out, go to NAILD.org. But for right now, we're going to go 100 strong with the Scrub Roundtable. Well, Craig, we got another round table, a scrub round table growing here, buddy. This one might be more scrubbier than the last. I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's start off. And over here, we got Jeff Nafusi of a and Electric Company. Jeff, tell us. Apparently, it's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> tell us how you got in lighting, Jeff. In the lighting, uh, it's in my family, my grandfather and my father. Uh, my grandfather started the uh, business in 74, and uh, it's my mom's dad, and my dad took it over. And... Um, Accidentally, I didn't think I would get in the lighting industry. And then, long story short, I was waiting tables, moved back home to Louisville, needed money. My dad told me, this, if you want to start working in the warehouse, go ahead. Six months later, someone left inside. I moved inside. The rest is history. And what's the name of your company again? Uh, AM Electric Company there it in is. Louisville, Kentucky. The Lighting Man of Louisville. The Louisville Light Man. The Louisville Light, Light Man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> how about you, Dave? Uh, I've been with Keystone six years. Um, came from about 10 years of sales prior to that. Um, so I manage about 10 states for Keystone and uh, came into the industry very green. Hmm. So uh, kind of helped me, you know, learning to uh, just dive right in, get thrown, you know, thrown into the industry without any product knowledge, starting from the ground up. And it's worked out pretty well. Join, hmm. join this industry, enjoy Keystone, I like working for them. Cool. Uh, so cool. So Keystone has been a big supporter of this show. Yeah. 
And uh, so thank you. Including the sponsors of today's beverages. Yeah, these beverages are brought to you by Keystone Technologies. (laughs) Go to K-E-Y-S-T-O-N-E-T-E-C-H dot com. And of course, uh, we got... I don't even know what your last name is. <laughs> you don't even know. It's John a, Elias. There you Pac- go. Pacific job. Lamp and Supply. Yeah. Johnny Concrete. <laughs> Come on, Concrete. So tell the people how you got into lighting. Uh, well, I was working at a clothing company in a warehouse, and there wasn't a lot of room for growth. And my brother's girlfriend at the time um, said there was an opening for an inside salesperson at her company and what was Pacific Lamp and Supply. So course i applied and just wowed them so much that really? they gave that me the job <laughs> yeah wow. so uh yeah started inside sales um within three years moved outside sales three years later moved to inside sales manager or out still sales manager um so yeah just how many guys you got reporting to you now i got five outside and five inside that's pretty awesome man yeah so we got some guys who sell some light bulbs sitting yeah, around the table. Sure, sure and do. This is how a scrub round table typically <laughs> works is we throw out a question here or there and we all kind of chime in on it. So sounds good. Start off, Johnny. Yes, sir. Are you excited about the future of lighting? Oh man, it's so exciting. Just everything that's going on. But no, seriously, like with <laughs> I thought it was real. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was into it. <laughs> I was, so, so, into, I was I'm so into it, man. This lighting stuff. It's, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's it's when I started, you know, not like about 10 years ago, yeah. LEDs were just starting to, to come out. And knowing nothing from lighting before, I was like, okay, this is kind of the, the normal thing, mm-hmm. you know. Um, that was when like an A lamp was $42. Sure. And now it's like not only just lighting. It's like you have to know about controls and it's it's going into like electronics almost. So it's like morphing from light to like like electronic equipment and you have to know about daylighting and you know, all that kind of stuff that, that you normally wouldn't have known like 20, 30 years ago. How mom like, how mind blowing, Dave, was that pr- that that presentation by Adam Lillian from UL? I really enjoyed it. I did. And a couple of the seminars today where I took a lot from it. One thing I took and, uh, you know, was where are we at in the industry right now? Sure. You know, in a startup phase in LED, are we, are we mature, you know, are we growing? And I think everybody had a slightly different opinion. I mm-hmm. think we're just getting started. You know, I think uh, not just from the retrofit perspective, but new fixtures, I think we barely tap the surface you know i wonder if greg Hmm. i wonder if it's like because we're so into it every day and we talk about led every day we go into like this vertigo where it seems like there's more leds deployed than there actually is simply because you've been doing it so long that there can't be that many possible sockets out there yeah like i've been changing so many fixtures how many like there's so many people doing it right and they say it's only 12 percent, or they say it's only 15 percent I think it 100% depends on where you're at. Because coming from where I'm at, uh, people laugh when I tell you that 30% of my sales these days are still T12s in some cases. Uh, We do a lot of four foot, eight foot still. I try to, you you can try to maneuver people, but at the same time, LED tech, what he, uh, what John basically said is what I full on agree with. I think it's combining technology kind of with the electronic world. And I'm just a tech geek. I love, you know, being able to use sure. stuff on my phone to turn stuff on and off. And, you know, I'm, it's a lazy man's dream to use Alexa <laughs> to turn lights on and off. But, um, you know, it's funny. There's still a lot of old school people in my area who just you can lead them to water but can't make them drink uh, when their HID ballast goes bad. It's 100 percent cheaper to go ahead and, you know, retrofit your fixture to an sure. LED. But mm-hmm. some people, not, no, no, don't want to do it. So. It'll never be 100%, in no. my opinion. And even when it's 100%, everything's LED. It won't be 100%. Well, you know, the the, the, the thing about um, the presentation from um, Adam Lillian from UL is he's saying, all right, you want to help people with health outcomes? Give them 300 v- lux of, uh, of vertical foot candles for two hours a day, and you will help them with their health. Yeah. That, that's, that, that's, he's telling you this is all yeah. you have to do. Are you guys ready to sell that? <laughs> I think it would go over people's head a little bit. Yep, just a little. It needs some, some 
certified studies to, I mean, there's a lot of people that aren't going to take to that. He says he has 62 studies backing that up. I mean, I'm by PhD scientists, by PhD scientists. We don't know any of these studies, but my wife's a PhD, <laughs> so I better go along with that. Then. No, but I mean, like, he, he did, listen, UL's, this is, UL is, um, is not like, um, you know, some lighting manufacturer that wants to sell something. The, the purpose behind it is that, you know, this is a human health and safety issue. So we need to certify that it does this. And that's the approach they took. And they said, in order to do this, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. I and believe there's truth to it. Absolutely. There's health benefits. But how can you pinpoint the exact health benefits or consequences, even with 62 studies? Yeah, you know? I agree with you, man. I don't disagree. But I'm going to lay out his argument that... I've asked four PhD scientists and all four of them didn't give me any definitive metric at all. And then none of them right. said, this is what you do. They said, you know what, this is what we think. This is what we think might be the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And they just said, no, this is how you do it. That's the first time I've heard that. And I've interviewed a lot of smart people. If that's true, this is going to be another massive revolution in the lighting business. Like if what he says is true, it's going to be massive. It's going to be bigger than LED. I think so too. If it's true, that's yeah. the key element and all that. I mean, what does an average space get for vertical foot candles right now in an office? Most people don't even think about it. I mean, the yeah. IES didn't yeah. even have a measure for it until recently. So how does that, I mean, that's going to affect what lighting design when you're doing Absolutely. new construction? Like, is that going to affect, you know, watts per square foot that you have to think about? Sure. Is that going to go up or are they going to just move the lights? To a different spot on the vertical plane. Yeah. Like how how is how is it all going to work? We talked to a few people <laughs> yeah. a day in the podcast, and it's yeah. about layering light. Yeah. So they're talking about individualized task lights and things like that that you can yeah. reflect in. But and you know it's it's interesting that you see a lot of there's a there's a lot of money in tape light. There's more tape light companies than I think there should be. So they must make good margins. People are putting tape on yeah. somewhere. Yeah. When's Keystone coming out with tape light? Oh, no. Can't, can't comment on that. <laughs> but no, I mean, right, though. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, what kind of industry can you tie in health, life? You know, mm -hmm. everything's coming full circle. I mean, it's it's an exciting time. And uncertainty, you know, but you sure. know, you know, um, but yeah. So Jeff, going back to your LED um, sales and why you don't sell them, uh, are there are I there good reasons? I mean, <laughs> everyone, why why they don't do it? Is it sometimes because, I do. Sometimes he does. Is it is it the rebates in the market are low? Is it just the the rebates in Kentucky are not great um, mm -hmm. compared nationally? It's not even. I was talking to people from Colorado and I couldn't they, for their UFO fixtures are getting one hundred and thirty five dollars back to the customer yeah. and you know selling it at a, 200% profit mm -hmm. because sure. they get so much money back to the customer. And I, I can imagine that's a huge selling tool for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think part of it's just uh, a generational conflict. And, um, you know, uh, it, we're uneducated people, honestly. I'm not trying to put down my clientele, but, you know, it, if something like, a, like, oh, that's not going to save me that much money, it's all, you know, and you can lay stuff out. But I also, at the end of the day, the customer's always right. And, um, you know, you try to work within their lines. And eventually, I think, as long as you keep, you're honest with them and keep the options open, I think eventually people see the light and it just takes them a while. That's what, Mike, you, you said earlier today in a different podcast. It, it, we're trying to make believers. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Make believers. <laughs> and it's hard like to Your go. goal is to make someone, you know what's interesting? And I, and I, you know what's a good way to think about it? Mm -hmm. You say to someone, this is a great question. You want to make a believer, right? You say to the customer, do you ever heard of negative numbers? I said, what do you mean negative numbers? Do you, do you remember when you learned about negative one and negative two? And they, they say, yeah, yeah, of course. I, yeah, of course, negative one. I'm like, well, do you know what the negative number is? And they'll say, well, I know what's negative one. No, but do you, what does it indicate? What, why would you have a negative number? It's a loss, baby. No, not a loss. <laughs> That's not a loss. Yep. A negative number indicates an absence of something. Okay, so let's talk about negative numbers for a little bit. If you switch from this wattage to this wattage, you're going to have less energy consumption down the road. I, I totally agree with that. I thought 
uh, was it Mark Jewell yesterday? Mm. He he brought up the good, a uh, very good sales pitch about you know don't tell them on what they're saving, tell them what they're wasting. Yeah, and sure. I thought that was a very good, good idea it, yeah. too. I never thought mm. about it like that. So that might that might go over real well down yeah. in Louisville, actually. Yeah, I think so too. I think that you know he said, hey, you mean it's not you're not going to save anything. We're talking about why are you wasting so much energy? Yeah, and yeah. then you get that social pressure. Uh, it's just then it looks damn good too. You put new UFOs <laughs> in a warehouse, it looks great. Yeah. I'm not a big UFO guy. We're not big of the terminology. <laughs> it's not a UFO for everyone. It's a UFO. It's a round high bay. Yeah. No, it's a round high bay. I've got one in my you, warehouse. You, and say, I love it. you say UFO <laughs> again on this show. I'm going to blur you out in the YouTube video. Okay. <laughs> I'm the Louisville light man. <laughs> does, that, does that work for me? If I say, yeah. can you blur me out? Yeah, I'll blur you out too. <laughs> You're in, John. <laughs> Seriously. So, oh, man. Now, do Greg, you guys think, that's interesting. Do you think you need rebates to sell lighting? Like a lot of them. Hell are- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Dude, uh, I'm one of the best. I'm one of the best at this. Yeah? And I, yeah. Dude, I've heard on previous podcasts, you know, that uh, you can be a little pro rebate and also a little anti rebate. Well, it depends on what hat I'm wearing at the time. Yeah. So make, you know, my voter for Ontario elections, I think someone should be explaining what rate based means to people. I think, I think that's important. I think that a lot of people don't realize that. And it's like the government, the government's giving me the rebate. No, what's happening is the utility is taking the negative number of your energy savings and they're amortizing that number over five years and they're billing it back to you to everybody in the rebate in the, in the in the in the in the rate base and so what that that creates is a bob and rude scheme where the poor give money to the rich so a lot of rebates are based on that bob and rude principle where you take the money and you give it to people that own factories and own warehouses in order to take in, in order to incent them to change from way their wasteful habits, right? Yeah. But um, so I'm kind of against that, actually. I think that's wrong. Oh. Put on a different hat, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I live in Toronto, Ontario, and this is the competitive environment. Let's cook up some schemes. Let's go out and make some money on this and get our customers the biggest piece of the pie that we can get them. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah. But you know what? I'll tell you, I don't think you'll sell another lighting project for 10 years if they cancel the rebate program in Ontario. I think I disagree with that for Completely. 10 I mean, We've seen people that have, have lost it and they still sell, but it's not as much. I'm more addicted to rebates than Are anybody else. Rebate addiction. <laughs> I've got <I'm> completely addicted. <laughs> uh, I can't even imagine not having rebates. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> uh, do we get some shots? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brought to you so, by the same way. Yeah. So, so rebates have definitely affected the business. We know that. Um, we, we got Johnny's reply on that. Who else? Is, uh, I don't, I don't what reply do you think, that. Jeffy? No, no, on on the excitement. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. No, what, about, what about the rebates? How addicted are you? Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's become almost to a fault a, a – like a natural part of the business. Hmm. And that part that I don't really like. Customers have been trained to, to almost accept it. Like, oh, I'm not gonna buy anything from you unless I get a rebate. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And, and I like rebates. We do like a large part of our business is based on, you know, the, the rebate process, whether, you know, we're helping get the rebate for the customer or we're just selling direct to them and then they're getting a rebate from somewhere else. But that expectation that they are only going to do a lighting project if they get a rebate, I think is wrong. I think they should want to do a, a, like a lighting project to save energy, um, whether or not there's a rebate involved. In it. So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> He loves these rebates. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree with yeah. you, dude. I can't, I can't. I yeah, can't. but don't take them away. <laughs> yeah, but don't, 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 that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like everybody should be cultivating. Yeah. Uh, like everybody should be one of those guys called preppers. Or like, it's like, you got to be like a, a lighting prepper. What happens when there's no rebates? <laughs> we move into an underground right. bunker. <laughs> that's a, I mean, that's the first thing you say. I got 12 what cases of that? LED tubes in my basement just, just waiting right. for the day. <laughs> 
rebates have been around since I've been in the, for 12 years now. Sure. So uh, even with the six light T8 high base, which is significant, that, that was one thing that our state did great actually on the rebate program and like, you know, people to get mm. rid of metal halides. I wish they would take more an approach on the LED than they do. That's pretty much, you know, the area I'm in. But uh, that being said, right across the river in Indiana, they do a great job of it. So, you know, I, I, I'm a big fan of the rebate, but I'm with him as well. I, I think there's more to it. Because I think you are going to save money in the long run, and I don't necessarily think you have to have that incentive to do it. I, I think it helps, and uh, it's a good selling point. But uh, you know, uh, my biggest selling point for people with LED is not is the energy you're going to save and the time and the headaches you're going to save with it. Because um, uh, we were talking about where the industry is kind of going, and um, it's a little bit scary for a small small guy like me because leds are working <laughs> and sometimes you get a little you're like okay what's going to be my next step here which is why you know you start to look at drivers you start to look at solar options for some people or 300 lux route. right in the back of your eye uh, or that <laughs> do you believe that <laughs> you're gonna cure, you're uh, gonna cure everybody's <laughs> depression i don't know man people believe what they believe that's one thing yeah, it's sure. gonna be interesting to see the I, I can't wait uh, the the migraine you, you guys have run across the migraine light yeah, people sure, right yeah. the, that certain lights are sure, better for that sure. so I don't know so the the rebates go away number one thing you revise your proposal how you propose projects you know you got to look at new metrics potentially uh, I know we don't want to do productivity but I might start liking productivity all of a sudden. <laughs> I might do it too, dude. <laughs> like it's, you, know, it's like, you know what? Like, hmm. You know what? It's, it's like, like, I'm getting a little jacked about that, actually. <laughs> like, like, you know what I know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Like, here's what I know for sure. Here's what I know for sure. If you shine a white light into someone's eyes at a casino, they'll give you your they'll give you their paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those those places are circadian rhythm disruptors. That's exactly what a casino is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a giant circadian rhythm disruptor. I think it, it works. Yeah. I think a couple guys. So the reverse rhythm. works. It does. We know that if you do the opposite to circadian rhythm and you shine that much lux into someone's eyes, it'll put them into a state of dementia or whatever and <laughs> want to gamble away their paycheck <laughs> at a casino. Right? That's why casinos have them by definition because it does that. Hmm. Okay? Right, so we know that for sure because casinos are doing it. And then this guy comes along and says, yeah, you all knows you can do it too. Really? I question them, man. Until I question the them. Until the rebate goes away, then you no longer question them. <laughs> yeah. And you put it on the proposal. <laughs> <laughs> and see what happens? Maybe. Johnny, what do you think? Rebates go away. Part of me wants to say it happen. <laughs> Just because it, it'll be it'll, it'll be like the ultimate disruptor in how you sell lighting. Yeah. And it's like, it'd be kind of exciting in a way. Like how you have to learn how to sell something in a totally different way than you do right now. Challenge. Yeah. So uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky says, um, if you gave humans nothing to do and live in paradise without any challenges or pain or anything like that, and you let them stay there for two weeks, they'd start breaking everything to make challenges. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, I agree with you, it's like a pioneering spirit in yeah. me that wants to see what happens <laughs> after the rebates go away. <laughs> You know, I want to I want to go fight that and see how I think I could win that war in my market. Dave, how about you from a manufacturer standpoint? From a manufacturing standpoint, um, I think it would open up the floodgates to a lot of competition that might not be as reliable. Um, without rebates. Without rebates. Yeah. Uh, you know, without slapping your... Not to DLC. interrupt you, but aren't we kind of there too sometimes with people? I mean... It, I mean, I, yes. I think there's a lot. I, there's a lot of stuff that comes in that's just not right. I, granted, the rebate's a totally different thing, but I just I think we're kind of already. I, it'd probably be a little crazier for sure. But I, uh, there's so much yin yang stuff coming in every day. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you take away the rebates, then you know, all of a sudden DLC coming in. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you guys? What do you, what do you think of the DLC? I mean, you, you I love think, my line. What is my what is my line? Well, I, I just wanted to rewind and say, oh. you're you're a believer in, uh, in in what was said today, so I think you should be called the Circadian Canadian. Oh, <laughs> baby. Yeah. All right. that's good. Man. <laughs> you think the Circadian <laughs> Canadian? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> like, <that's impressive. laughs> I like Woo! That. Yeah. That's good. Oh man. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love the way we drink on the scrub round table. Yeah, the scrub round table, that's part of it. Hey, only Bud Light. All right. What do you got for questions? Jeff, you got something on your mind, man? Uh, Johnny, jump in. John, go for it, man. What's on your mind? Well, like, go back to the, the DLC question. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, I really I am happy to see that they're, they're attacking the quality. Like, I felt like that was lacking for a long time. You know, mm-hmm. it's just always been, you know, you have to hit these certain things on a on a spreadsheet and then you mm-hmm. get that sticker and then um, you get qualified for a rebate mm-hmm. and not really thinking about kind of ties into the, the whole circadian thing too. like what is, you know, good lighting versus just, you know, efficient lighting, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it's a whole, you know, when we try to, you know, we're big on education at Pacific Lamp. So we always try to talk to the, the customer, not just about, you know, dollars and cents of what you're going to save, um, but how it's going to actually affect, you know, your daily life. Yeah. Light, lighting is there. If you change an LED, it's there for. So you're long. already selling health effects. In a, in a way, not not health. We're not, yeah. we're not calling it health by any means, but we're, we want to do we want to do good lighting projects. Okay, sure. We want to be known sure. for the people that do, you know, lighting the right way. That's a good. That's a good goal. Versus, you know, just slapping um, whatever's cheapest up in the ceiling and calling it a day, moving on to the next project that you can just slap whatever's cheapest up and keep moving. Sure. Like we want to put the right thing in that in that spot, hmm. not you know anything that'll fit because it's going to fit in like the lowest part of your budget. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I thought it was interesting too regarding DLC, how it seemed like they were tapering down uh, efficiency uh, and, and focusing on some different areas, hmm. which if we took away rebates, I mean, for manufacturers, then it'd be almost 100%, you know, efficiency focused, which we are focused hmm. that way anyway, but that would be the driving force to get the better ROI, right? Hmm. So you're taking all that. On the DLC? Yeah. Um, he summed up pretty much what I thought to be sure. honest. I, yeah. Piggybacking off him uh, a little bit. Can I change the subject? Sure, of course. <laughs> I, sure, Jeff. Come on, no, I kind of like what you were saying. Like, like say more good things no, about me. No, I, well, I agree with Jeff. Validate his ego. Know. I agree with most of actually what both of you said. But uh, what do you guys think is the next big thing in LED? Uh, you know, we come to this uh, conference. They show. You know, you go to what like 15, 16 different manufacturers, and they try to show you that what. You know the next big thing is do you guys have any thoughts on that at all like the bluetooth mesh do you think so like i I saw the (laughs) the, (laughs) it's all about the mesh network baby Uh, (laughs) keystone's uh, got it right i I just want to know what the like you you know you come uh, i I, you guys have been to a lot more of these than i have so sure uh it's a good question i I don't know like if two years ago like something came out you saw here you're like wow that's really gonna sell i only had that feeling one time okay in this business once my f- the first time I saw a T8 LED tube with a frosted lens, <laughs> I said it's over. With the bypass or just? No, I just with the frosted yeah. lens. Okay. Like without seeing the dots I'll and it was kind of smooth. Like as soon as I saw that, I was like, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's yeah. over. Yeah. As soon as I saw that. Yeah. I like pandas that, myself, but that was one thing I that caught my eye right away. I'm like, man, these are so light and people are going to sure. jump at the ease of doing that. Sure. But uh i'm not trying to insult anyone including you or anything i I didn't see anything like this week that like popped out of me be like oh man that's going to be the next big thing Mm -hmm. well let's let's talk about what the next potential big like li-fi has talked about yeah life potential that is that ever are we ever going to go into a facility now and say oh let's change all those out so you get faster internet we all have pretty fast internet now i mean it has to be pretty unique applications where that really is going to matter to them i think it's going to matter in the virtual reality world Okay. I think Li-Fi will facilitate the speed and the, the, the pervasiveness of the internet that you need for ultimate virtual reality. So you're saying that that's our next big thing, Li-Fi then? You're gonna well, Li-Fi is understand. basically the matrix. Yeah. You're in- so like, like Wi-Fi is like a radio signal, right? But Li-Fi is like, there's the internet. You're just going to move the internet out of your way. <laughs> So okay. <laughs> so it's like that's going to facilitate virtual reality, dude. You're well, in the matrix. Be in certain like supermarkets are going to jump all over that. Second, no, you tell dude, them, yeah. the, the only money in that is in virtual reality, bro. 
Right. But like we already got like customers that in the, in that like retail realm, that's all they, that's all they can think about right now. What's that? Wi-Fi and sending signals to your phone to tell you like what aisle to go down. That's like, so weird and invasive. I, I know it is. I think, it's, <laughs> but, I think it's very strange. I, yeah. I think it's going to be, uh, I don't think it'll be the next big thing. I, I don't, I'm not sure how much it's going to catch on. I find so creepy, dude. I know they were talking about, he was talking about it today about, you know, being pretty much the next big thing. I, I just, I don't know. I think there's a little too, con- I think a lot can go wrong too. But yeah, the invasive part is uh, a huge red flag for me. It already feels invasive. Yeah. I mean, what we have currently in place, you know, Alexa listening to us. And, oh, I love Alexa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Don't you know. talk bad about uh, Alexa. Alexa loves me, okay? She yeah, actually, me. you know what? You know, that that's actually not ridiculous what you're saying yeah. right there. Yeah. You actually may have developed feelings for Alexa. Oh, I thought we were talking about the other. <laughs> no, no, seriously. <laughs> no. Like, they, they, actually, no. they actually are one, they're wondering if humans can have real emotions for robots. Well, it's like people the movie, study that now. The movie Her. Yeah. If you ever saw that with Joaquin no. Phoenix, no. Good no. movie. Yeah. Surprisingly good. So, I mean, that's not as ridiculous as you might say. And the idea of like living in the matrix, people, I've been, I've been saying this on the show, people are like, what are you talking about? Talking about the internet is in the light, bro. So that's another play. I don't know if I could sell that, Grady. Yeah. I mean, so life, I maybe not. We've got, every, everybody's all in on health effects. So to me, I think it's got to go there. It, you okay. know, go back to your question. Because that's where all the focus is. Whether it's all DLC is going to come out with DLC certified health effects lamp. Put a healthy you stamp. Think the disinfected lamp and all that that they were that was that got a lot of people. That talking did, about. but I, it's unique yeah. applications again. I I agree with you that. know. So I mean, too. we've we talked to the people from Kennel, I think it was. Yeah, it? yeah. And we went through that. But yeah, it was kind of like you want, and you want got to wonder about that. Like that's one of those things where you know, like you think of Flickr, and you're like, damn, we did, we got that wrong as an industry. We reintroduced Flickr. Mm-hmm. Right, literally, and that's Mine, bad. So, yeah. Like millions, dude. There's m- tens of millions of flickering LED tubes out there. So that, his answer is, "Flicker, we're going to go flicker free to fix everything." That's the next big thing. Yeah, you go flicker free. What about that? Go back and fix it all. I mean, do you think solar is going to start catching on a lot more than it is? I like those solar fixtures that a couple of those peeps that, had that out there. That was cool. That was cool. Some of them are pretty cool. Yeah, there just, are applications. Yeah. Obviously, just, just the fact no electric, sense. you know, just simple. Got to have enough sun. You got to. I don't know though. I still some some things can go wrong. Yeah. I'm sure the batteries in there are always. Well, even though, even though wrong, yeah, 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 there's a lot of variables. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, okay. yeah, that's the right way to put it. Yeah, yeah. It's like if yeah, you know, Toronto, Arizona. Hmm. You know the gray skies of Ontario. That's, that's a good point. Right. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to fly too well. The lighting industry is all about variables. Everything. <laughs> it is. Everything. Oh, it depends. Yeah. That's the answer to everything. <laughs> But see, that's why, uh, you know, we're a little biased, you know. I like to retrofit because sure. there's consistency, you know. Yeah. You're, you're, you're and if something's oh, even sorry. playing field. No, uh, well, it, the same being, um, I think retrofittings, uh, when people ask me, I said new fixtures, uh, the best thing about retrofitting is if something does go wrong in your warranty or whatnot, all you have to do is go up and change the bulb. Okay, so, so, so hang on. I'm going to give you some proper terminology. Okay. Okay. Ready for this? So a retrofit can describe changing the fixture up too. When you say yes, you can retrofit. Yeah. Right. So, but what you're talking about there is a modular LED system. Okay. Where there's replaceable components like the legacy style. Sure. But you're not talking about a retrofit. Well, I mean, like a corn cob, like a, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, 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 sure, like four footers, whatever. Yeah, I'm sure. just saying, if you have a problem with you know your yeah. ballast bypass stuff. The worst thing, the best thing that can happen is, oh, I don't have to call an electrician. All I have to do is yeah, change yeah, yeah. my bulb. Yeah, you it's know, it's like, very, the benefits are, are very obvious to that. Yeah. Totally, man. Totally. totally. To sell on that. No, it's a great selling point. Because LEDs do burn out. 100%. Wow. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I guess that's the scrub round table. I think that's the scrub round table. Shout out to scrub round table. Jeff, AM, AM Electric Company. Dave from Keystone Tech. Thanks for the beers, Keystone Tech. John from Pacific Lamp and Supply. Greg Eric, Michael Colligan. This has been the scrub round table, baby. Got Keystone Technologies on the number 100 Get a Grip on Lenny podcast. Man, Greg, what a ride. What a ride, man. Oh, it's been awesome. It's been awesome, and I can't think of a better way to make Mark 100 than a scrub round table. Mm-hmm. Getting lighting scrubs together, talking about what's going on in the industry, 
That's what this podcast is all about. And that sums it up beautifully. I'm the circadian Canadian, you know, given that name during this scrub round table. You know what the fuck, you know, what's, uh, it's hilarious is that we do what we do at a nailed convention. That's a nailed convention where we were when we did the scrub round table. We sat around, mm -hmm. we had a couple pops and we talked light bulbs for an hour. Where else are you going to do that, son? You got to go to naald.org, go to keystonetech.com, check out all of our sponsors. And folks, hey, I'm real honored to that. Um, I'm listening. You're, I got you. You got me and my me and Greg in your headphones or on the YouTube or wherever it is. We're super grateful to you guys. So thank you for listening. And of course, join nailed you son of a gun. Written on the rectory wall. There's a sign there for all. You are lost, Lord is there to find you. 